tell you what, though, I'm digging the chair vibes. It's kind of good, right? Yeah. Are we live? We're live. Oh, we're, we're not, not live, but we're recording. We're not, yes, we're recording live. So, uh, not to dive straight into it because we'll bullshit a bit because we haven't seen Dean. But uh, I watched. There's. I wish I remember the channel. I like to pay dues where it is. This YouTube kid does like mini documentaries on pop culture things, uh-huh. but they're really good. Like he's pretty in depth, and it feels like it's like a ten minute doc on like random stuff. So this one was on Bam Margera. Oh. Which is on topic, yeah. on brand, and uh, I forgot what year or what you know. Probably whenever he was popping. When was that? Twenty two thousand six, maybe. Yeah, I, I mean, my, my timeline with that is pretty messed up. I don't know. But we were high school ish. Yeah, like the Viva like. La Bam show and all yeah, that. Yeah, I feel like that was yeah. early high school for us. So maybe two thousand five. Yeah, Jackassy stuff. Mm-hmm. He was, and don't quote me on the number, but he was like outselling Tony Hawk's skateboard decks by like 20 fold well yeah the bam margera um element decks because he went like any and i don't know if he thought it that well because it seems like you know no offense bam but it seems like his brain cells aren't quite there um but he he like did a pink board or something which i guess was one of the first pink boards out there you know and so like chicks were buying it purple too yeah a lot of like more feminine colors Hmm. and people were just buying the fuck out of his skateboard decks interesting yeah it's crazy. What's the skateboard? So we brought on, obviously, Dean is our movie expert, our caffeine expert. But now, for this episode, you are our skateboard expert. Um, what's the artistic draw from regular brands, n- n- not Tony Hawk shit, doing skateboard decks? Because that's a thing. Like, skateboard deck art? Yeah. And you brought us yours, and I'm going to find a better way to display it. It's over my right shoulder right now, but... What what and you're obviously into skateboarding and all that, so it makes sense for you to do one. But why do random brands do it? I think because it 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 makes you feel maybe it makes these brands have like a sense of like uh, look what we're able to like produce. Like look like we got so many connections we can do this. Yeah, yeah. almost kind of thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Or it's like also like you know it depends on like their background, right? I think a lot of the people that do tend to make those maybe had like used to skate as a kid and something they always wanted to make. Like, you know, I've seen like even like Randall, you know, at Live Fit guy. He, yeah. I've seen him make decks. Right. And then like I looked into him and, like this from over the years and seen like, oh yeah, he used to skate back in the day. So he's probably always wanted to have his own skateboard. That makes sense. Because even there's a, lot, me, there's a lot of that. And, and this documentary um, made it me go down memory lane a little bit. So I skateboarded like two years or some bullshit, you know, I was in like third or fourth grade. And it, it was, was not to in our generation and like not pick up a board at some point. Which right? I didn't know was like a thing. I didn't know like skateboarding was invented in my youth. Like mm-hmm. it wasn't invented, but it was invented. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Especially it's like second coming. It's de- it definitely was popularized. Like I didn't know it, but I watched the first X Games ever. But mm-hmm. when I was watching as a kid, I thought the X Games were like the Olympics. I was like, oh, this shit's been around forever. Mm. Not forever, but you know what I mean. I thought it was a normal thing, yeah. but I literally was there in the start. Yeah, which yeah. I didn't realize till this documentary. Yeah, and, and, and like all that, the streetwear culture, the, the, which they didn't go into in the movie, but like was so parallel to what was going on in the movie. I didn't know that was a thing, but it makes sense why I was so heavily influenced by it. The yeah. uh, the uh, Powell uh, the Powell uh, documentary, kind of like the Barbell Brigade, or the, excuse me, the Barbell Brigade, the uh, Bones Brigade. Uh, oh yeah, Inception documentary, which is also really good. Yeah. Um, goes in a lot more about the brand. Mm. Uh, the mo- the the movies they were making, the videos, yeah. the uh, the clothing, the obviously the boards, yeah, and uh, how that like sh- like made them so much money. Because this touched on it, and you get the idea of the culture, but the culture was that like yeah. I just recently there's a new show popping uh, on uh, Abercrombie and Fitch, and oh. it goes into like some of their malpractice and like racist vibes and shit, and which is all like true and neither here nor there but it's what like i white hot or something yeah, yeah 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 but what i enjoyed about it was more of the branding because mm-hmm. they dig into that as well abercrombie was the shit well in the mall culture of our youth yeah uh like just gone now yeah and and i don't know if it was a thing before that like obviously you'd go to a mall and like shop but like our youth that's like where you hung out like and each store during that era way more than now where everyone kind of wears the same shit now that era where you shop defined who you were. You were a Zoomies guy. You were a Pac Sun guy. You were an Abercrombie guy, right? Like you're the preppy guy. And then hot it, topic kid. Yeah, you're the hot. To- they mentioned that. They yeah. say the hot topic guy. Like you know who you are. The Ben yeah. Clare dads of the yeah. world. 
just hanging out yeah. in front of Hot Topic. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And then like, oh, buying like, black fingernail polish. And... Yeah, yeah. Choke. You're wearing dog chokers to fucking. Dude, hell yeah. Like, Sick. Yeah, you're into like preppy shit. Like you're the Abercrombie guy. Like, oh, you're into extra preppy shit. You're the Banana Republic guy. Yeah. Like every place had a niche for you, which was so interesting. Do you remember the Abercrombie? They would hire people to stand in there like shirtless. So that's what this whole documentary is so about. So hot. Is like how they only hired hot people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the like old CEO or whatever steps in and says something like that. Like, wait, wait. Yeah, we hired hot people. You're telling me a brand uh, for youth kids hired hot models? And it worked. Oh, wow. I bought an Abercrombie. What a crime. <laughs> I was wearing fucking rainbow sandals with <laughs> torn jeans. Dude. In a puka, puka shell fucking necklace. Oh, dude, yeah, and like a striped polo. Like, Loved it. Looking like a rugby shirt, dude. Yeah, for no reason. Because it was sick. And their marketing was so good. They're like frat boy stuff. And they, they break down a little bit of the of like their thought process behind it, which I love. Like, all right. And they had like three different cars, like diagrams of cars. Like, all right, the Abercrombie guy, what's he driving? And they're like, not this one. Like, he's driving the Jeep. And, like, <laughs> they were so perfect. There was these two brothers that were twins that were like, Big time Abercrombie models back in the day. If you you 100% saw their picture in there, and yeah, I like, probably had it pinned up on my wall. Oh, dude, probably. <laughs> yeah, I'm like that guy. That guy's obliques are yeah, lit. Yeah, that guy's sick. Body's <laughs> sick. Uh, my sister was actually like really close with them. I think they were like from around here. That's interesting. Which really? is interesting. Yeah, it, they're like local. It was very California vibe. It was. And then Hollister was like a SoCali vibe, but Abercrombie. I never kinda, got into the Hollister. I wore a little bit of Abercrombie, but not even that much. I was still kind of in the Sean John world yeah i kind of did both in a weird way man yeah. it was like total that was totally normal at my middle school it was Me like too. you could wear like a like a fat farm shirt even as like a white kid you yeah. know like yeah. wearing a fat farm shirt and then like an abercrombie the next day yeah. it was like there was this weird like preppy hip-hop like intermixture cocktail p diddy of, like, yeah he's he's wearing polos and yeah. shit and, and echo made polos yeah you know, like it was like polo. This, it was this merging of culture of like of like, yeah, it was weird, and it was like totally normal. Like one day, yeah, the kids were wearing Abercrombie, the next day they were kind of wearing like it was just weird. Even now, that's kind of where because because obviously everything's cyclical and everything's back to where yeah we were in seventh and eighth grade. I loved it. I loved, it. and I just read a quote. And I tried to quote it in my YouTube video the other day, and I butchered the fuck out of it. I'm gonna butcher it even worse now because it's further away from when I read the fucking quote. But it it was something. I don't know if it was Versace or somebody was quoted like we start playing dress up, in eight, eight, when we're eight. And fashion is just that for adults. And I'm like, I love that. It's true. Like, why can't I go to Hot Topic and wear a fucking choke collar? Just because I don't listen to metal? Fuck you. I want to be a Hot Topic guy today. Yeah. Like, it's kind of fun. I want to be a choker guy. Yeah. And tomorrow I want to be an Abercrombie guy. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I think it's a part of that going, <clears throat> excuse me, what, what goes on with that now is like city by city. There's cities that yeah. really have, you know, a, a culture of dressing the fuck up. Um, New York City obviously is one yeah. of them. London is super that way. San Francisco a little bit. Yeah, I don't know about Seattle. I've been there in a minute, but um, even here I made up ours uh, just because <clears throat> I do it because I was an athlete. But then Uriah does it a lot. Is like a sweatpants and then like a sandal. I that's, call that I a, call that the NorCal. Yeah, that's <laughs> I the, love that. There's nothing more. <laughs> there's nothing more uh, MMA or like jujitsu than like sandals year round. Yeah, they just go they, barefoot. They live everywhere. in sandals. There's actually this guy. Who makes like handmade sandals for like most of the top fighters like in That's like sick. in all the world and they're all like handmade these leather ones you can get them down uh and uh down south I think and like I was, I fucking looked at a pair yeah they're I'm dope. like oh shit I kind of want some of those even though I don't fight these look, I, uh, these look sick like 150 bucks I'm like ah, I don't need them that bad <laughs> I collabed with uh, Mike Yistretel a while ago he did some translating for for one, uh, Kaizen my other company and he's fucking walking around like barefoot everywhere <laughs> like dude this, dude this dude he's like a purple belt or something you know he's a badass yeah he's like when you're when you're when you're that lethal you know shoes just aren't important yeah you trying to roll yeah <laughs> you trying to roll bro let me let me tie you up. <laughs> We just went down history lane of culture, but I think that goes so hard into this because I would never consider myself a skateboarder, but it influenced so much of what I did. Because then once we go from the Abercrombie world to to the in the, in the Sean John world, those worlds collided in streetwear in like 2005, but it was so underground. And obviously that's where you and I relate a lot, like the hip hop and the clothing culture that we're into. But that preppy skateboard culture or preppy, comma skateboard, comma hip hop all became one under the umbrella of streetwear. Mm -hmm. And then now, just like hip-hop is, is mass culture, like pop music right now is hip-hop. Like you t you turn on any whatever Hot 100 station, it's all rappers. Yeah. yeah. 
New rap. Right. New yeah, version yeah, of yeah, rap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely not Wu-Tang, but it's whatever's going on. It's fucking weekend and... Things change. Yeah. Things change. Yeah, a little Yachty or little whoever. Mm-hmm. Um, I know I sound like the old guy. But uh, clothing did the same, and now street, quote-unquote, streetwear, which used to be underground-y, you only found it through forums, et cetera, et cetera. Now, that's what everyone's wearing. Yeah. Or, vin- or vintage. Yeah, vintage for sure. But even that, like, it's vintage. Like, shit I bought, like, 2006, the hundreds tee is now vintage tee that you're rocking you're again. Right, yeah, right. people are buying that for 100 bucks. You're right. I think technically, what is it, 20 years is considered vintage? Yeah. Something yeah. like that. Except like with the, 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 the except smog. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking bastards. <laughs> smog in California. Oh. At other states, they after twenty years, when your car is vintage, they get rid of exhaust rules. Oh yeah, which yeah. makes fucking sense because the car is that old. So why do I have to be up to now and day standards? Well, and there are fewer fewer of them right. on the road. But in California, it's not the case. Yeah, which is so stupid because I have a nineteen ninety BMW and it has to be up to twenty twenty two smog standards. Yeah, it's a yeah, that's stupid. a tough go. Yeah, yeah. N- just stupid. The problem with that also is like this is a rabbit hole now. Is that no, I like they it. say like <laughs> one. One massive California style forest fire does like fifty years of smog damage. Yeah, probably. Like, yeah. So it's like, are we really doing much with all these like yeah. smogs? Like, I don't think you should just compound the problem. But it's also like, is it like actually not as big as a problem as we're making it? My Sunday car is ruining the environment. It's not. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, that tree that got struck by lightning. Uh, in SoCal, they did a lot more damage yeah, yeah. than or, all or, of our driving for the last 50 years. Or everything PG&E's done in the last yeah, however many yeah, years. Yeah, big yeah. companies. Well, what we know of, they cover up everything. So. Yeah, we don't know half <laughs> yeah. the fucking if, issues. If, if they would just bury those power lines, like if they had buried them from the beginning when it was cheaper. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, yeah, there's a lot less now. issues. It's billions and billions of dollars to do it now to clean up their shit, but now... Bastards. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. Like, like, think about like just like phone lines being on these poles in the air. It makes no damn yeah. sense. High voltage ass shits just running around through the like, sky what, what next we, to bl- dry trees all day. But my internet's underground. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, yeah, I'm not. I'm not an engineer, but it doesn't make sense to me either. I, uh, in the because I grew up around Manteca, where where and Danny's in Manteca, Ripon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ripon. Yeah. The gyms I think is in uh, Manteca. He lives in Ripon. Yeah, whatever. Same thing. <laughs> I remember that Ramus Village is an area, it's like a, a subdivision there that they buried all the power lines because power poles are ugly. Yeah. And they're right. They're ugly. Like, yeah. why didn't we just do this? Like, yeah. like we were developing it. Why not just, I mean, it was more money, yeah, but again, cheaper than than uh, it would be later and certainly better looking. It looks, yeah. arca- it looks archaic. It looks it looks silly. Yeah, it looks right. like yeah, something you'd see like in the 50s. It's like, what is this? You know, yeah. it looks ridiculous. Like these next door a telephone booth. It's like what? What, what is this pole of wood? <laughs> it's all falling apart. Yeah, and these wires drooping down. It's like yeah. what is this? And they have to replace them all the time. And right. It's like God. So what would this movie do without like empty swimming pools? Because I just don't think that nothing would have ever happened without an empty swimming pool. Man, the the swimming pool era, bowl skating era, like was like totally, totally not necessarily something I was into. Because it wasn't popular. It was already dead by then. And mm-hmm. it's like, there is like a resurgence of it now that's still pretty popular. But yeah, it's crazy. Like all those skate parks that they were skating were all designed off of backyards, pool sectioning. Yeah, yeah. But they made them look like real ones, right? And uh, yeah, it's just crazy uh, just how much the sport of skateboarding has changed. Like, and they talk about this in the documentary, how it kind of just like everyone all of a sudden just stopped caring about vert skating. And it was yeah. all about street skating. Yeah. What's hot right like now? Street? Oh, always street now. Like, really? Like vert skating is like borderline like doesn't exist is that just because tony's gone because i feel like uh, growing up i watched both but i always liked the vert shit because i was always like i'm never gonna do that i'll kill myself there's still i think it still exists like in the bowl like the bowl stuff is actually really popular right now like more like the skate park style it's more considered more like skate park skating now it's more yeah. like the you know where there's like you know some ledges that are coming out of the bowls and stuff like that like that stuff's actually still pretty popular but the actual like literally like a wooden vert ramp yeah. stuff is like that's pretty much like irrelevant at this point it's so weird well it's also i think the kids weren't growing up doing it so there's no one and the risk to carry the torch oh, no man not no? really like these kids are jumping down like 30 stairs like yeah, doing like shit. smith grinds and like you know yeah, crazy gonna stuff they're way. gonna yeah it's if, if anything it's, it's more safe because you get the pads on and like the helmet. True. you know what i mean like there's a little bit when you can fall correctly on a vert some of those falls in this documentary are bone jarring i thought he was oh, dead the, the yeah the head slams gnarly. the head slam the one where his helmet flies off yeah, yeah. if he doesn't have a helmet his he's turned into an egg yolk yeah. He's dead. Yes. Yeah, it's required. There's no, like, cool factor of not wearing a helmet and vert. Like, it was just like, and how you're an he, idiot. He's going so hard 
And he's 50 something. What's the fucking loop? What's a loop de loop de called? You probably have a cool name. Uh, they just call it like a full pipe. When he does the full pipe and eats shit. Yeah, yeah, that was a slam and a half. Yeah. Both of those where the helmet falls off in that one, I thought he was dead. Like he fucking goes into like rigor mortis. Yeah, he gets he got Like that's 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 worse than any UFC knockout I've seen. Was that his ear bleeding or like the I side of his head? I think it was the head? side of his fucking head. Yeah, it looked like it was coming out of his ear, but it was the thing at the side of and his And one head. of the guys says like, "Holy cow, he looks so white and he looked 80 years old." You can see that from the vintage footage. He looks all of a sudden like dead. Yeah. It's one of the scariest things I've ever seen. Yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting to just talk about because we're this is a you know fitnessy podcast uh, that he started off as such a small short dude and he ended up at like six two six three yeah, yeah. but like one seventy like he just like doesn't weigh anything never weighed anything yeah he looks like a basketball player or a baseball player or something yeah I mean think about how many calories he's burning on those sessions yeah. like that and he's not like f- eating yeah yeah you yeah. know what I mean like yeah. he's, he's just, slamming Cheetos and Monster he might have like one big meal a day and then he's just focusing on skating the whole rest of the time it's like you're probably, he's probably burning 10,000 calories yeah and he's definitely in a caloric deficit he's so insane how hard he, it seems he goes because you never think of that like um any professional sport you do, it's repetition and repetition. You got to go, you got to go. But like until they film it like that, because they don't film a lot of sessions, right? Like all these, I, I used to go to fucking Zoomies and play Tony Hawk and sit on the couch and watch these videos. I was into the culture, same, same like a lot of things. I was into the culture, but I didn't participate mm-hmm. a ton. Like a lot of people were with surfing. Yeah, for, yeah, exactly. You could be in the yeah, fucking flyover yeah. state yeah. and wearing Pac Sun yeah, or Billabong. Early. Billabong. Early, yeah. They they always just show the clean hits. Sometimes they'll show like a crazy miss or something, right? But they're showing the clean runs, mm-hmm. where like they're showing Tony miss lift after lift, and you know he's there for two, two, five hours, yeah. <laughs> just oh, doing yeah, the same yeah, bullshit sure. same, yeah. same over and over. Yeah. Like it's so it's so crazy, and like how his brother describes him, like not wanting to miss or like being so angry until he fucking hits something, and then he's just kind of normal again, like. There is there is something going on in that dude's brain for sure. Oh, dude, yeah. <laughs> we even talked about it, even at a young at a young age he didn't. He's like, yeah, I was I probably would have been diagnosed with something at a young age. Yeah, know, like whatever for that sure. means. And you still have it. And yeah, that, and that's why you can't stop. Apparently, what, yeah. Yeah. what I don't get the is obsessiveness. You know, of like you know, is that like kind of like borderline like maybe spectrum yeah. obsession kind yeah. of fo- linear focus kind of stuff. The and then. If you guys can see, like, you guys, you know, you guys haven't seen the Bones Brigade documentary. You probably don't know a ton about Ronnie Mullen. No. But he's but I know very the similar. To, and yeah, and, you, yeah. and for sure, he's a legend. And he's very similar to Tony in, like, the mindset and, like, the obsessiveness, uh, like, you know, mental focus on, on one thing. And you can kind of tell the way he talks is very, very different and very, like, there's something different about this guy. Yeah. And in the Bones Brigade, it's it's even more intense. Like, you're, okay, clearly this guy is, like, a little different than everybody else, you know, like, the way he thinks about just normal things. Yeah, how how he approaches life. Maybe. Yeah, you know, yeah, and it's very, yeah, it's very, it's very different. And he talks about like his learning uh, disabilities and how he just kind of channeled all that into skating. And it's actually like the I suggest anybody that would be interested in this one to also watch the Bone Brigades documentary, um, which is I think is pretty good. But this one I thought was better. What I don't get is Tony's first story about like hitting his mom with a tennis ball. Did he say something like that? Or yeah, bad yeah, yeah, yeah. He said I was was, like, uh, they were playing tennis and he kept trying to hit her because I think he just didn't want to do it. Maybe. because But he builds that into like, oh, I'm different or something. Or, uh, you know, he, they're like trying to build this, this uh, you know, the, the foundation of what Tony Hawk's mentality is. His drive. What's his yeah, drive? Yeah, or why is he different or whatever. And I didn't get that story at all. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's indicative of kind of the whole thing for me. Now, <laughs> she's just sort of previewing my my thought of the whole yeah hit it the whole thing i liked it but i, I like H- tony hawk and i don't have any experience with the skateboarding world like my the on, my only time i've ever been on a skateboard was literally in the 70s sort of the first wave yeah, of, yeah. of skateboard the more surfing, more surfing style yeah, yeah. california yeah. shit and and i fucking fell off and i hit my elbow in a way that nearly broke it and mm. it's like okay i'm done yeah i'm done <laughs> this is board. it my cousin was super into it and it's like you know, my my late best friend was a was a skateboarder but just never really appealed to me but I always liked him going going in. I followed him on social media for years, and I don't really pay attention to 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 skateboarding much at all. Um, however, I don't feel like I have a greater, tremendously greater understanding of what drives him, having watched two hours plus of this yeah. documentary, than I did before. Other than I thought he was a nice guy, and maybe he's a little bit of an asshole, and because he's so he's so singularly focused. 
that and and I don't know whether what they were talking about is like okay, well he had this like revelation where he he you know had a come to Jesus Jesus sure. moment about his focus, but it sounds like his focus is exactly the same as it was before. Yeah, and maybe he's just a little kinder to his family. What? Well, like, yeah. So I, I kind of like that though because I think it's more real for me. Where like uh, they made it seem, uh, for lack of a better term, that he has a disorder rather than everyone. You go to high school right now and you talk to a high level basketball player, football player. Like, what drives you? I want to be the best running back ever. Yeah, like well, that's fake. Yeah. You know, like, sure, some people are wired that way. And when you hear Kobe talk, you're like, all right, maybe he is wired that way. Yeah. But that's just, I feel like, an external world feeding you lines. And so you're built up saying, that's what I want to do. And Tony never said that, yeah. which I actually like. He never said, like, I want to be known as the best skateboarder of all he just, time. He just did it. He just fucking invented Skated shit. all day. Yeah, he figured his shit around. He was obsessive compulsive about how maybe perfectionist or yeah. whatever term you want to use. And I kind of like that because to me it felt more real. Like, uh he didn't have to come out and have a reason. He just kind of said like, because people ask me that. I do Q&As all day like, well, what drives you? I don't know. I just fucking wake up and I do some shit. The yeah. lack of anything else. Yeah, that, yeah. Like I, I need some purpose and I, I do like helping people and yeah. fitness is something I know well, so I do this. Like, But I'm not going to say like, I'm going to be the best YouTuber of all time. I think like the people <laughs> that paid like really close, uh, that the, there's something interesting about this documentary is that the people that really pay close attention to like the outside lives of skateboards, there's been this like kind of thing of knowing like, okay, Tony Hawk's kind of like, he's been married four times, three, four yeah. times, whatever. Yeah. He's kind of like, uh, a mess with relationships and like he finally felt like this is the first time he's actually excuse me, sat down and like talked about that and why uh, yeah, he yeah. was that way and mm -hmm. then like accepting the fact that he was um lost and wrong and like actually had a chance to actually like speak about like why the he made those choices and what was going through his head when he was in these ridiculously like top of the top yeah. kind of situations and like what that's like dealing with that because at the, at one point we're talking like when extreme sports like popped up on the X Games and yeah. stuff like that, these guys were, these guys were the new rock stars. Like, especially like for, him. for young kids. Like I it was like they're making millions of dollars a night doing yeah. boom boom huck jam. Like, <laughs> I think like on top of the world traveling. He's in in a category of his own because we could say like Michael Jordan, Tony Hawk, same guy. But then you're like, you could easily go like, and, and my mom could say it. Oh, what about that Kobe Bryant guy? What about the LeBron James guy? You talk to my mom, or I use my mom as a reference as what's pop, mm -hmm. table talk known, yeah, yeah. A household name. Yeah. If you say Tony Hawk, there's nothing else. Yeah. There's nothing else. Yeah. You and I can say, oh, well, there's Dave Mira, and there's, you know, yeah. but there's not. Yeah. There's not. There's no one else in the extreme world in these type of sports like Tony Hawk. There's yeah. not, even, not even a second tier. No. Not even close. And Dave Mira, for bikers... No, oh, yeah, sure. If He's you're into there. BMX, you're like, oh, Damira, uh, Bob Hoffman. There's these names. Yeah. But there's no fucking the video games, mm. the skateboards, the MTV award shit, the Nickelodeon award shit. No one even comes close to what he did. And so I did like that part of it, too. Like, one, he got to tell a story and, and kind of say sorry in a way. Yeah, but it's sorry did, to his family. Yeah, but it is so real, too, in a sense. Um, even though they didn't get that emotional with the vibe of the, the documentary, mm -hmm. but the story is like... He lived the rock star life. He even said, he said infidelity, alcohol. Yeah. And he's very Drugs. real with it, although they didn't make it. They didn't really go into any specifics about any of that. Yeah, stuff. and they didn't make it emotional how they filmed it. Yeah. But if you listen and pay attention, like... You talk about going to. He talked about going to like a center rehab of some sort. Yeah, yeah. whether yeah, that yeah. was like drugs or or just me mental rehab. It could yeah. have been any of those. It didn't really say. Doesn't yeah. really matter. But he, he didn't say at all. That was yeah. noticeably didn't yeah. say. Yeah, what, sure. What I do think, like, if we have to choose the theme of the sh the movie or the documentary or Tony Hawk's life, is he was truly, truly a trailblazer. Yeah. Like, which I didn't know in skateboarding that like he literally it invented vert skateboarding. Invented a hundred. Well, they even tell you like a kind of a number uh, to put things in perspective. At the at one point during the, uh, I think they were doing like him making that last nine hundred he did at yeah. forty eight years old, when he talked about what a um, psycho. Yeah, <laughs> the uh, that was in two thousand sixteen, I believe, and uh, that was the last time he did one. Yeah, I think it was like forty eighth birthday he did it, or it, was, like, it might have been like an anniversary for the. I think I, I watched that live. It might have been like a, yeah. a, a, an even number, like 30-year anniversary or something to the first or 20-year yeah. anniversary or whatever it was for the first time he did yeah. it. And that's why he did it again. Yeah. Anyways, uh, they said, yeah, he invented over 100 tricks. But not only that, like the very first like ollieing into the lip. Yeah. Like I didn't know that shit. Where everyone's they called doing, it cheating. Yeah. Everyone's yeah I thought doing, that was funny. Everyone's doing like one, one foot, you know, airs. And yeah. then this fool is now six feet in the air. Yeah. Like he, he literally invented the sport in a way. And the kids were so other... 
competitors were so scared of him that they would just deflect by making fun of him yeah. and bullying him yeah. because they were so scared of what he meant to their like uh, irrelevantness. Well, think of the and first. They were right. This is like a corny analogy, but think of the first dude ever that pulled sumo. Even yeah. now, people say it's you're cheating. You're cheating. Yeah, 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 right? Pussy. Like, yeah, yeah, or using straps. Like, right away, you're cheating. So this fool's catching eight feet of air. You're like, you're fucking cheating. Yeah, that's you're, exactly the same thing. It's a great reference. Yeah, yeah. it's funny. That, yeah, that is. That's Because um, you're just better than me. Yeah. <laughs> you right. can do shit I can't okay. do. Well, yeah. you have the same yeah, tools. option to yeah. try. Yeah. yeah, but I ain't taking eight feet of air, dude. Fuck no. that. No. Before this, I did not know where the McTwist came from. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A- and it's in skateboarding, too. It's in. Why can't we just call it a 540, though? Because I think you technically get, <laughs> well, you think because you technically like oh, uh, your head the way that you're, a yeah, a little bit, and it sounds cooler. Yeah. Because he, he made it up and it's got his name in it. Yeah, yeah, it is way cool. I would love to name something. Yeah. If I could choose a lift, you know, like, and that happens in lifting too. You get to choose it because if you do something that they sh- cool. They should have called it the Hawk Spin, the 900. Right. Yeah. The Hawk yeah. Spin. Yeah, just call it the Hawk. Yeah, yeah. it's fucking dope. I'm going to do a Hawk. What Dude, that, that video 900. game though, like culturally. Yeah, I think the video game probably did more for his Holy. his legacy than any oh, 100%. other thing. Remember, he talked about like, oh yeah, they just handed me a check for four point five million dollars. Yeah, and then soon yeah. after another twenty mil. Yeah, yeah. unbelievable. That yeah. game is insane. Every every single person I know, because when you think about it, and he even kind of said it, like, who's gonna play this game? Like skateboarders. Like when you think about a skateboarding game, you're like, dude, that sounds boring as fuck. Everybody played that game. It sounds so boring, but every single because of the the uh, the game itself is fucking sick. The soundtrack. Like, every single person our age played that video game. Oh, for sure. For sure. And it was on every console. You know, it grew with the consoles. Yeah. You know, it came, you it's know. It's so good. It's so good. Yeah. His, his impact is actually insane. It's probably underrated even still. I wish they, they don't really talk about it too much on this, but this kind of, like, segues into, like, the uh, like the clothing and style, which kind of, like, you know, yeah. with the brands that we do, it's kind of relevant to the conversation. But, like... They didn't really talk about, you know, his like Nikes back in the day, how everybody used the Jordan ones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, Lance, that's why Lance Mountain's got so many cool Jordan one collabs, uh, which is, was his teammate. Um, you know that from the documentary, but uh, and now he's and he went to Vans and when he was a young yeah. kid originally. And yeah, now, he's, and now he's videos. back on Vans, which is cool. I think like full circle. Now he's back on the Vans team like yeah. at, in his 50s. It was like the comeback. Yeah. I remember like the promo they did for that. Yeah. Um, when he first joined, I think two, one or two years ago, who I can't tell with COVID years, like kind of get <laughs> yeah. messed up. But like, they're within the last three years when he went to, yeah. to Vans, yeah, they did sick. this like welcome back like video that was like super dope. It was cool because he's probably still skating his tits off. Oh, he was. Yeah, because well, yeah, he's still skating his tits off right now. Yeah, that's but so um, crazy. But it's just so crazy how, um, I always make this argument with people when they want to talk about like not even argument, but this point when uh we're talking about fashion in mainstream fashion. And how it all originates from skateboarding. Yeah. All yeah. the biggest trends and trends that are going on right now. Carhartt, all that shit. All of it is yeah. all originated in skating. 100%. And people just don't either want to believe me on that or they don't, they want to be like, well, no, it's like music. It was like, no, the music guys are just knocking off the skaters. Yeah, like a lot of times. Like the white tees, that was, that was 100% yeah. skating because they were cheap yeah. and they looked good on camera. Yeah. A, cr- a fresh white shirt. Yeah. And like you just put a new one on. And you're skating, you're looking good. The baggy pants, like that was kind of like everybody was doing that. Yeah. But like when baggy pants got popular again recently, it's because all the skaters were wearing baggy yeah. pants, the puffy shoes. the uh, Yeah, some of those shoes, I'm glad they're gone though. I mean, <laughs> let's not bring Osiris's back. I mean, Jordan you know? 1s. No, for sure. And Vans can stay and yeah. Chucks, all that stuff can stay. But let's keep the Osiris's back in 2003. Yeah, those can stay. Yeah. But like the Jordan 1 thing, like the reason why skaters skated Jordan 1s is because. They were on sale because no one wanted them. Yeah, that's so crazy. And now it's like the most popular shoe ever made. Yeah. But like that has a lot to do with the skateboarder skating. For and they sure. Made, they made them cool. Yeah. Because it was aligned with this like cool counterculture. And then that carries into like, you know, music industry and yeah. then the mainstream and then like the whole funnel. When you skating know, really got really super cool in the 90s, it was that gap of Jordan 1s, which were made in like what, 87 maybe? Um, maybe maybe 86, yeah. Yeah, but they technically 85. Yeah, yeah. And then they got 86. They were like marketed in 86, yeah. 87. Uh, it was in that gap where they're not cool. Yeah. Right? Like right now, whatever was in 2016 isn't cool. Yeah. 
right? Yeah. What's cool now is what was in 2001. Yeah. And so it was that gap, but skaters are rocking them. Yeah, probably because they're cheap and they're flat. And yeah, you get some grip flat. on there. They're yeah. cheap and flat. Yeah. Because they, they were on sale everywhere for $19. Right. And that's you know, why Vans like, were a skate shoe. They're flat, no one wanted the blue ones because the blue ones were like supposed to be like the dorkiest ones. But now it's like <laughs> one of the most popular, like the Royals. Especially in fitness right now, everyone's wearing Jordan ones. You, oh, for you, sure. You're a fake sneakerhead and you just buy Jordan ones. When every trend's about to die, it hits the, uh, the, the gym yeah. sesh. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah. It's like the last. They are stop. the last guys. To They're always the ones still style. wearing like the biker joggers. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah, in yeah, the yeah. gym with their uh, Yeezy three fifties. It's yeah. like, dude, like, <laughs> I let's, let's chill. Uh, <laughs> you're stuck in like four years ago. They really are. And uh, us trying to manage like bringing in modern trends into our brands is is tough sometimes yeah. because you're like, oh man, like these people that we're marketing to are like most of them are not up to speed on on this because we're pulling, they're gonna think it's weird. We're, we're pulling, pulling new from, shit. We're yeah. pulling shit that that's cool now that people like that live outside of maybe California or New York have no idea is even cool yet. Yeah, when I first talk, talked to Bart about doing an oversized tee, this is only like a year and a half ago, he was still like, I don't know. <laughs> and, and not because of him, he knew it, yeah. but he was talking from a business standpoint. I was like, well, here we go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And now every, like, you know, like you see like all these like bodybuilders on YouTube, you know, they're walking the big. Yeah, they're the pump cover tea. oversized yeah. tee. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's the thing. What's the big dog's name? The number one guy right now? What's his name? Bodybuilder? C-Bump? Yeah, C bomb, yeah. dude. He's the king of the yeah. of the T. Yeah, the the Jordan ones or the Air Forces and a yeah, baggy the dun- T. The dunks yeah. now, dude. Yeah, like, dunks are cool. Dunks are. But it, see, even when we were into dunks, like 2010 or whatever, when Jordans were kind of in a lull, that's but what dunks you bought because you hot. couldn't. That's because you couldn't get dunk because the dunks were yeah they were everything. Jordans. But, but yeah, but but even the dunks then it was a subculture. Yeah, you didn't was. see them on the street. If mm-hmm. someone had dunks, you knew they were a sneakerhead or 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 into streetwear. Yeah, and then even now with Jordans, like. Only you only see Jordan ones. Mm-hmm. People aren't real sneakerheads. They don't know. They they're not about sneakers. They're about Jordan ones. Yeah, for sure. And the uh, the the funny thing about the dunks too is like, man, like I remember when I would get dunks on the Nike ID. There were always an option for ID. Yeah. And like, be, and no there was, way like, there was no scarce. Right there was no scarcity. Yeah. You know, and now they do an ID for dunk and it sells out because they have put a cap on it because they're still trying to like control yeah. the market but um now we're just talking about <laughs> now we're just sneakerheads. <laughs> but um it. well while we're talking about sneakers there's a I, i've kept up with with uh winning time and there's a bit where magic's being pitched uh sneaker deals and uh which is probably what we're probably still in the year like 81 79 yeah, 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 i mean yeah, in the, in the in show that. it's 79 80 i don't yeah. know when it really happened yeah, probably <clears throat> but um, a lot of the stuff that happens in that show happened, but yeah. but just because Nike of, wasn't shit, people don't know that. Yeah, Nike he, wasn't shit until Converse, Jordan, right? Yeah. Converse, Converse, Adidas. Yeah, uh, Adidas, yeah, Adidas is who he ends yeah. up signing with. But yeah. Nike pitched him this amazing deal with a back end percentage, and they showed like if he had taken that deal, if he'd been ballsy, he could have been Michael Jordan. It, it was billions of dollars. Yeah. yeah, it was billions of dollars he walked away. That's from. why Jordan's a billionaire. And and yeah. they wanted to put. All they wanted to do was put magic on a fucking white shoe, yeah. you know, back here. That yeah. was the whole deal. Yeah. And the magic it, shoe, the magic yeah. shoe. Then he ended up wearing the, mar- the marketing with that. It's good. The magic shoe. Yeah, it's so I good. mean, come on. It's crazy. He magic is, Air. Yeah, jo- Jordan's or Nike literally wasn't shit till the nineties. Yeah, people don't know that they were like a. a, a, a well, Jordan s- almost signed with Adidas too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone. I mean, he, he, they were like they were like level three in track and field, and that's it. Maybe a little bit of tennis. Yeah. But they didn't make. They were still very new, though, right? To the they were I, big I, and running I, about. In that's the conversation, it. I think Reebok and uh, Converse and shit have been around since the eighteen hundreds. It's crazy, yeah. Like eighteen eighty, I think. Swear to God. And it's all come full circle because now Nike owns Converse. Yeah, they yeah. own. They own the they world. Own every, they, they own, own us too. Hurley. Yeah, they own. They own Hurley. Yeah, they own everything. Uh, to get back to the doc for a second, um, they were incredibly lucky that so much footage was shot. Oh man, yeah. that's skateboard and, culture too. I feel like YouTube has to think skateboard cu- culture. Like everyone has, yeah, to, like just it. randomly whipping out a camera that's not for your kids on Christmas wasn't a thing. The skateboarding, and I'm gonna say this again, like skateboarding <laughs> made hijinks cool. Yeah, all like, of it. Every skate all video was full of hijinks, yeah. vlog yeah, hijinks, yeah. like yeah. of like somebody getting pranked in the middle of in between clips. Mm-hmm. Like for there's sure. these little like intermissions of like lifestyle. Yeah, and it, like that was the original vlogs. Like you would buy the DC skate video. And there'd be little like behind the scenes of into yeah. their lives, and then so, pop I mean? into something cinematic with a cool soundtrack, and then pop back to a guy pouring water on another dude's head, and then pop back to a fucking cinematic. Think about like you know where you know where Robin Big came from. Yeah, yeah. The for one sure. little tiny five minute bit that they did in the DC video. Yeah, him it's called, it's called the DC video. It was him pretending to hire a security guard for skate spots, 
to uh, so they can like have a security guard talk to other security guards. Yeah, to get and the ball like, funny little off you. exactly. Yeah. And this funny little thing, and that turned into a billion dollar industry. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, DC was so big. DC's big again, man. Yeah, yeah DC's big now. Like, they were they really got big in like snowboarding. Yeah, like, and they really took off in snowboarding, and they're like now like DCs are cool again because everything's in the nineties cool. Even again. Rob Deerdick, how fucking huge he is. He doesn't even. I wouldn't even throw him in the league with Tony Hawk in terms of like um, not money or anything, but like cultural impact. I don't. Cause he wasn't like the best. Like he was a good skater, but he wasn't like a like. He wasn't a you know. He didn't inv- invent fucking all these no. off a lip. He had like, a that's cool little so style. Insane. He had a cool little style. He wasn't super. Uh, he wasn't super uh, nuts on tricks. Like he was just technical kind yeah. of skater. Like he was just like a really good pro level skater, but nothing stood out. But that he was just char- his charisma, man. Yeah, charisma. Yeah, he's funny. I think most kids know Rob Deerdick as the MTV guy. Yeah, not Rob, as the pro yeah. skater. Oh, he used to skate. I don't even yeah. know. Rob, first couple seasons of Rob and Big were so good. Oh man, that show was I fantastic. Yeah, Fantasy Factory, it. bro. Are yeah, you fucking so kidding good. me? So good. A great show. It really is. Yeah, that was pretty amazing. Um, the relationship with his dad kind of surprised me. Yeah, because I I expected it to like you closer to a stereotype of dad doesn't understand and, and and I'm a rebel and this is what I'm gonna do and whatever. And dad is like older dad number one and two very involved. Yeah, you thought not only because skateboarding isn't cool or like isn't like there's no money, you're wasting your time, that right. dad would be separated and that big age gap thing, you think dad would be even more separated. But yeah, it was nothing further than the truth, which is actually fucking really cool part of the documentary too. Yeah, that was that was yeah. that was interesting and it was, you know, it, it was like that one part when they were talking about how the dad was like almost like he felt like his dad was almost just like uh, taking away his credit for like what the things he was mm-hmm. accomplishing because his dad was like a part of the organization. Yeah. And like everybody was like, oh, man, like it must be his dad just like hooking him up with good spots. And it's like that must have been tough. Yeah. Yeah. Because that happens even like on the small scale. Like my dad coached my seventh and eighth grade basketball team. There's a coach's kid, a coach's kid effect. Yeah, yeah. No, literally. Yeah. And obviously I went to like a small school, so it didn't matter. It was pretty blatant to see that I was one of the best players and that's why I deserved to play. But you go anywhere else, like, oh, Timmy's only playing because his dad's a coach. Yeah. yeah. Like that happens all the time. That happens all the time. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, be better. And yeah. he was he was clearly really good. Not at, yeah. not at the very beginning, but he was ultimately clearly very good while his dad was still involved. And his dad's focus was really to try to legitimize the sport so that his accomplishments actually stood out and stood for, for sure. something. Yeah, and then eventually led to like financial support. Right, there, right. Like, like let's make this thing legit. Like there's no league. Yeah, that to was make cool. This thing profitable. Well, yeah. one one little hypocritical thing uh, I saw, which is like. I can understand, but maybe people watching don't. Um, I think his dad is talking about it mostly, where he said, uh, what other sport do you see competitors genuinely cheering for each other uh, to to do well? And obviously what popped in my head first is weightlifting and powerlifting, because typically you do. And it is a similar individual sport in that way, where like, it's a performance. Yeah, me me wishing this guy doesn't land this kickflip doesn't help. Like, let, yeah. let's see him do something rad. And, like, me wishing Dean won't clean and jerk, you know, 360 doesn't help me at all. Like, he's going to lift it or not. Might as well give him some support. Yeah. But um, all the interviews say differently. Like, all these guys oh, are dude, talking yeah. mad shit, like mm-hmm. literal shit, mad shit on Tony. And uh, even though it is hypocritical – being in the industry, our industry is the same, right? I go to a meet, and even if this motherfucker hates me because he thinks, you know, I'm a sellout or I'm a YouTuber and not a lifter, he's going to probably cheer for me at the meet. But if you get an, uh, an in, uh, honest a interview. A mic on him in a back room somewhere. Yeah, he's probably going to say Solomon Mike's a piece of shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think also, like, do you think that that might have been partially, like, his dad just trying to paint a good picture of the sport for, for that sure. interview? For sure. Like, and he does, maybe he doesn't actually, he knows, like, the kids were talking shit about his son yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Like, I, it, think, I think that, that him might, that might have just been, like, him just like putting on a show for the cameras and, and i do think some of that I the don't local know, news station yeah or whatever i don't know skateboarding as well as you do but i'd imagine there is some and, oh dude no there's everybody hating on everybody it's most yeah. hater most <laughs> hater sport there is dude like i'm at the skate park like even like in you know in the last recent years man just like i'm around you. kids you know at the skate park all the time and like i i'm friends with a lot of these guys but like I hear them talking shit about so and so who's not there that day. Yeah, whoever's yeah. not there that day, someone's talking shit about them. Yeah, so or they're like making fun of their tricks. And powerlifting is kind of like that. It sucks. But in, in, in genuinely speaking, right, compared to other sports. But I don't know, man. Playing in basketball and stuff, people were cool too. Like I, I played in like some semi-pro leagues and shit. And you think it would get kind of hot and spicy, like a bunch of ex-Euro guys, ex-NBA guys. Mm-hmm. But like if someone's good, you're just gonna be like, yeah, that dude's pretty good. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if you're good enough in anything, you're going to have haters for sure. But it, it's kind of like that Dunning-Kruger thing. Like, if you're good, good. You're gonna recognize real. What does it say? Real recognize real. What do they say? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like it is true. Like if you're good, good. You're gonna recognize this other guy's good, good. And you're not gonna hate. It's always these middle ground guys who think they're good that are the haters. The problem. Tony the- Hawk ain't hating on you. No, no. He was. <laughs> he was. Remember that guy was hating on him so hard, and he still went and had a conversation. Know. Do you with know him. that guy? Like a, I, I don't know anything about those yeah, guys back. That then. one guy did not seem like he had a good one. <laughs> oh, they're all they all look like they just did a, a hard no, but that one in particular ten years of meth. Tony yeah. Tony like looks old, but not really. Like Tony looks pretty good. That one guy, you're like, holy Yeah, well then he talked about then he then he brought about the fact that his his son passed away. Sad. Which like probably did not help the you know, his bitterness towards life and oh you, know, you know, obviously clearly he's went through uh, some really tough hardships. That dude's right? shoes got more miles than all of us. Yeah. 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 yeah exactly. So I think that there was like his face too. Right? All of it, dude. Oh, his neck tats, it. all it's all bad. Yeah. yeah. And then it was and it was good to see you know what they really did a good job with him on this interview. I think Jim would like this or on this pod on this uh documentary is it really showed his progression, uh that guy. I can't remember his oh, name. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. really showed his progression of like um, from this hard ass, like the first couple interviews they do with him, he's like this, like kind of dick still. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. And then he becomes humanized at the end. They tell his own when story. he breaks and he breaks down and starts crying, and like they almost give him his own little story of yeah. like yeah, yeah. of like uh, changing who how he was and like accepting the fact that he was just deflecting because he was scared of Tony and like mm-hmm. and then yeah. talking about how nice Tony actually really was when he got to know him and he had this personal conversation mm-hmm. with him. And I think that's the underlying thing too is like not only did Tony's cultural impact and Tony's you know compulsive. Uh, nature to get so perfect everything he does um but it also i think shows despite his huge level of celebrityhood which is shown on his twitter and stuff we talked off air like yeah. the memes about like uh hey man you look like tony hawk well, i wonder what he's up to have you seen those memes yeah, 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 yeah they're yeah. so good because yeah. he is such a normal guy and i think the documentary shows that like although he reached this stardom and this money and all this and he admits to making bad decisions he still acts so normal because the sport is kind of like this blue collary sport in a way. You know what I mean? It, like he never got this and maybe he did get an ego and that's why he's, you know, infidelity or whatever, whatever. Like he but he always seems like a good dude. Like the conversation with that guy. I think he's super Teflon. And yeah. I don't know exactly where it comes from. Yeah. He's just super Teflon. Yeah. And some athletes just have that or not, but I think the sport uh, who yeah. he is his parents seem like normal yeah. good people C- clean cut white guy yeah yeah like nothing really nothing bad really sticks also the bad things that he did were very interpersonal yeah 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 and not like yeah you know maybe not like uh, uh what's it uh malicious right. not yeah. malicious no they were very wrong place wrong time being young too much money like things that are definitely um you can understand his yeah. mistakes you know yeah it, may, yeah. it feels human it, uh, the thing that was an, a hu- very humanizing too was the great fall off of of the popularity of, of skateboarding for yeah. a while there, and yeah. and like, where's the money going to come from? And I'm trying to support a family. Uh, dude, and the I money in the nothing. beginning must have been crazy. So like, I remember watching the first X Games, going to skate shops, which like probably aren't really much of a thing anymore. Well, there's a couple. Yeah. yeah. A, no, actually, it's funny. Uh, one just a new one just opened up off of. Uh, R Street. Oh, that's dope downtown. That's yeah. smart. Yeah. Um, I think they was moved location, but it's like in a prime spot. Yeah. And then you got PLA, yeah, which PLA. is really big here. Um, which is, yeah, FTC in the Bay. Like yeah. being in, near San Francisco and Sacramento, we're actually kind of a hub for skateboarding in a lot of senses. Oh, for sure. Sacramento, like you look back at clips of like these like big like girl chocolate skateboard videos and all these like Brandon Beebles from a lot Sac. Of here, like, yeah. There's like, there's so many spots in Sac. Like Sac is like a very important piece of yeah, the of, story. Uh, of skateboard history. I, I remember going to the street skating history. I remember going to the state fair probably in the nineties because I probably wasn't in high school yet. And like the Mountain Dew tour was a thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. And oh, and, yeah. and they'd be throwing down like the not Tony Hawk stuff. level guys, but like big name guys were going well, the Dew crazy. tour the Dew Tour was still is I shit, it might still be going on, like with Nyjah and them, like the street, yeah, the street probably. competition. Yeah. But do you remember that at the state fair? I never went to it. No. Oh dude, so where they have all the water and you do the little paddle boats, mm-hmm. they emptied that bitch out and like built half pipes everywhere i would oh, watch okay. it all day long at the fair it was remember like the sick. uh the, the, the don't do drugs and the bmx team would come to your high school do you remember uh, that dude i went to a weird high school i didn't yeah, go to school true. experiences there was always be like these like <laughs> i had harry potter and dumbledore come by they were all in drugs. on drugs they just didn't talk about it. yeah <laughs> yeah the te- every the teachers were high the what teachers, were they gonna teach me yeah, they're all in psychedelics <laughs> the, uh yeah they would be like do like the, they'd be like the the don't do drugs uh, demo will come to the school and be like these guys with like pull up the ramps in the in the yard and the uh, showing you it's cool to be sober. Yeah, it's cool to be yeah. sober because you can do backflips on yeah. your BMX <laughs> yeah. bike. Like, oh, that's cool. Let <laughs> me try. 
Get no shot, right? But uh, yeah, it's um, yeah, man. I, I, it's crazy. Like, and they, and they touch on this, but man, like skateboarding is like such a sketch business, man. Like, it is literally high highs yeah. and low lows, and like right now, it's all it's, based on popularity, right? Like, yeah, it's and, hard to do. And even right now, like it's not in the best place. Like Lottie's skate shop just closed. It's like one of the most iconic skate shops of all time. And you think it would be right because it just got in the Olympics. It just sneakers but see, that's the are thing cool. that people like the skaters don't give a shit about that. Yeah. Like the kid that watches skateboarding that doesn't actually skate that this maybe has a skateboard because like it's cool. They care about that, right. but like skater skaters don't want yeah, that. Yeah, they really don't care about. They rather that. shoot a VHS. They want to go skate trip. out in the streets and like that's why Nyjah. That's why nobody likes Nyjah. Yeah, he's because he's more about the pop culture. He's more about like the fin- like the perfectness. Like there's this right now, which is not good for skateboarding. The popular the popular thing in skateboarding is the more grimy style skating, the more creative. Yeah. Like, what can you do, like, bomb this hill after you hit this ledge yeah, and yeah, then yeah. bomb this, like, hill? Yeah, and grind like, a fucking mailbox. The GX1000 effect, right, is what it's called. It's brand. But this... this is like, GX1000 a uh, uh, Instagram guy? GX1000 is, like, a brand of guys in SF. Yeah, uh, I know. Yeah. I played Call of Duty with that guy. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Dan's... <laughs> That's so random. Because I don't know shit about modern day skateboarding. Yeah. Dan, big mm-hmm. Dan's older brother's big skateboarder. I think yeah. I told you that. He used to be with the DGK kids. Okay. And like yeah, yeah. shoot all the time on Pier 7. Yeah, yeah. And so now he's it's still. an SF thing. Yeah. yeah. So he's still super shout out. We'll fucking shout out Pier 7. It's his new apparel company. You're fucking welcome, Mike. Dude's yeah, always I, asking for help. I grew up skating Pier 7 while we're talking about Pier 7. My mom, this is crazy. This is crazy. <laughs> I know. I'll, 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 it's a little segue. No, it's good. Yeah. Uh, my mom, thinking about Kathis now is crazy. Me and my buddy Justin. We were probably 12, 13 years old. My mom would drop us off in San Francisco, in the city, yeah. at Pier 7. Different times. Dude, we'd <laughs> drop us off. Okay, kids, have fun. Here we are skating in, in this giant city, 13 years old, no parent supervision. Yeah. There's a bunch of other skaters there. It's sure. borderline skate park. And it's like close to touristy things. So yeah. like there's normal folks. But here's the thing, though. And then we're like, oh, let's go to Third and Army. So what do we do? We get on fucking public transit yeah. and fucking hit up uh, Third Army. It's like 13-year-old kids just traveling yeah. this, this massive city. That's how Dan grew up. Dude, it's just it's just crazy thing about, like, I would never let my son do that. It is different times, though. I feel like San Francisco sure. is such a different city. But, it yeah, was. Pier 7, Big Mike, he just started a company called Pier 7 because that's where he shoots out, all his videos. Instagram's pretty good, too. Sick, yeah. Um, I've, seen, I've done a lot of tricks on those ledges. But, yeah, that whatever 1,000 guy, pads. I was playing Call of Duty with him last year or this year. That's sick. Yeah, they, that, their he brand's shoot, sick. Yeah, and he shoots hella good videos and shit on Instagram, right? Oh, yeah. They're, yeah, they're go to their, like, YouTube channel. It's fire. They have, yeah, they have I haven't seen that, but I've they, seen his Instagram. It's dope. They make legit, like, you know, they have boards now, apparel. Like, oh, that's they have it all. Yeah, I didn't know that. But, yeah, I was playing with that guy. Yeah. How do we feel about the music in this one? I actually thought it could have gone harder. I thought it was fucking great. But yeah, it was just, good. Uh, what they have, like? Uh, they played a couple tracks that you're like, oh, skateboarding, but coming from like uh, the Tony Hawk video game where the soundtrack. Man, we need some raging as a machine on here. The Where's soundtrack the to Tony Hawk. The toy dolls. The on game there. is like eighty percent of the game. Like the game is fucking rad, and you're flying through the air, and it feels so smooth for the era of game. But the soundtrack made that so much. I felt like they could have gone so hard uh, on nostalgia on this, and I they see, did good. When I think Tony Hawk video game, I think of the hanger, the hanger. The first level with the Rage Against the Machine, uh, yeah. machine song. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> dude, the drop in on that first map's fuck. There's yeah. no like fluttering about the first Tony Hawk. There's like no. There's like a menu, but nothing. And then you just click like play, and then you're just fucking dropping in with Chad Muska. Yeah, dropping in with Chad. Dude, dropping in with Chad. <laughs> that's his. That's his podcast. The games, though, man, definitely I think were mostly responsible for a the resurgence of skateboarding. Yeah, and then also the popularity of Tony mm, for and, sure. You know. Yeah, it was. Uh, Soundtrack's good. Soundtrack includes one of my favorite songs of all time, uh, "Never Stop" by Echo and the Bunnymen. It is in the first like fifteen twenty. I'm minutes sure if I heard it, I'd be like, "Oh, that one." Okay, it's, yeah, a, yeah. it's got a just a crazy cello line. It opens with a like, you know, Sick. I don't know. I can't really. It's like very like bowl skating song. Yeah, it's so fucking good. It's just one of my favorite. Yeah, skateboarding of all time. and music's a weird tie too. Oh, dude! Like, and then you got guys like you know. Uh, primitive you know yeah. uh and they're like buying like big names for their for their uh for their songs right yeah, it makes they'll sense. drop a youtube uh video and they'll have a travis scott's feature right it. like they'll Which like they're dope. paying like big money for like yeah. good, good good music because the music and culture in skating is just as important i've never that's thought why about they, that. that's why they borrow style like, that's that's probably another reason like i like skating because i i know nothing about it i fucking maybe landed one kickflip and then quit and then but basketball Obviously, I love the sport and I love to play it, but what's kept me 
loving the culture is the culture. There's music, there's clothes that are so intertwined with basketball. And I could never think, and I always talk shit on baseball and football because there is no culture, which is cool too in a way because it's a, mesh, a melting pot of people and styles. Uh, but skateboarding is probably the only other sport that it's so closely tied to clothes. It's so closely tied to music. Like 100%. basketball and skateboard, probably a reason that I, I'm always – Never haven't skated since fifth grade, but I still watch the X Games. Haven't you know? I, I have nothing to do with it, but there's something that always makes me They're like very it. aligned. Yeah, yeah, it's and weird. basketball too, and that's why I love it. Uh, a thing about about that song "Never Stop" though is that he obviously we talked about this has never stopped. Yeah. He still he broke his femur a few weeks ago. Oh, recently? Like, yeah, just a few, yeah. just a few weeks ago. Uh, just like he almost missed the premiere of this documentary nice. because he broke his femur nice and he's like i'm going i'm going like, so i list i listened to the uh i listened to the um audio through my headphones and while i was watching it on my uh, phone yeah. mm. and the audio on that was so good oh really yeah. oh my gosh like the the uh, cuz i had you know one in each ear or whatever uh. so it's like the yeah, they just did like they went all out. I feel like I was watching like a cinema That's movie. It, it was, was like, very it was filmed good. But, you know, all of it was like uh, as of the documentaries we've covered and watched, like it was really good. Yeah, for sure, it was good for sure. Yeah, it, it didn't feel long. You know, the story's good. There's some questions and, and so it, stuff I'd wish they would dig into, but I think what like what you were saying, Jim, earlier about how like you just like didn't learn enough from him. It's cause I think we've watched so many documentaries about these like extreme people that just ignored everything else in their life besides yeah. the one thing. So we're just so used to that story playing out the same. And it might yeah. even be like you know a fake I mean? story. That's why I kind of like this is it didn't feel fake. Where like some of those stories you're like, of course you're going to tell me fucking Kobe worked hard. I know Kobe. You know, and like they're just drilling that into you. Like, no, he woke up at 5 a.m. And I yeah. love Kobe. I'm not meaning to talk shit on my, him anyways. Yeah. But but like the, Kobe's the typical greatness, grind, hustle, kill yeah. guy. Um, so whoever it is, whoever we watch, they always have that or zero to hero yeah. or the outworked everybody. Like they talked about Tony's work ethic, but they talked about it more in like his psychological issues than like, oh, Tony worked harder than everybody. We've noticed he just had like an obsessive. Yeah, he really liked skateboarding. Yeah, yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah. like he couldn't not. Uh, they call Which it, I kind of like. They didn't. They didn't like romanticize this whole thing. They just felt kind of normal. Yeah, they called it the worst drug. Yeah. Which I thought yeah. was like, oh, yeah, okay, so that's that's really what his issue is. He's completely addicted to it. Right. To. To skating. Yeah. And he can't stop. Yeah. It was, and, and they do a good job of talking about that too when they mention like after he would land a trick, it wasn't like all this stoke and excitement. It was more yeah. like, okay, finally, okay, I can like, I can be normal now. Yeah, I can take off. It wasn't like, like this like excitement of like, yes, that was so much fun. I did that trick. It was yeah. more like, okay, thank God I did that. I can feel like I can like rest tonight. Yeah. It wasn't like this like excitement. It was more of just like a fix. Yeah. Even though the, the 900 land, the first one, which I did watch live. That was fire. Bro. Yeah. That's I, a little different. I got some little chilies, you know, yeah, like the whole, good. the whole fucking almost park. Turned me, that kind of shit tears me up. No, I love I that. love that. We've I, talked about yeah, it. Like remember yeah. the Titan Z type yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that, that right cool. there, that scene and everyone's freaking the fuck out. I love that. You really saw the camaraderie from competitors. Yeah. Those are also all of his buddies. Like and the respect. Like competing against each other, but like they're all really tight for Friends, yeah and like them all jumping down onto the ramp yeah, and like that was cool that's where i can kind of relate more to like powerlifting um is like you train with your buddies you compete with your buddies you hang out with your buddies you joke about shit mm -hmm. between your buddies and there is a camaraderie in sports but it's not with like competitors it's always with your own team and then even on your own team there's 12 dudes you hate five of them the five are just annoying or they suck or something yeah where like skateboarding you're all in the same place because you're all so similar powerlifting mm -hmm. kind of the same you build a crew together it's like you're not similar in your life, but you're all here for the same thing. Your humor tends to be the same. There's something there where it's easier and fun to cheer for them, and it is more clubby. Mm -hmm. Like there's a, a, a men's club vibe about it. Yeah. Rather than and powerlifting, and I assume skateboarding. I, a lot of its assumptions because I was never part of a skateboard crew. There's but just, the problem with skating is like there's too many styles of skating, and if you're not if you're like your crew does like a certain type of skating right you're not very you're not really seeing like kids like nyjah hanging out with the gx guys mm. they yeah. think G, they think nyjah is a kook and they think that, that he's the worst thing for skating yeah, yeah because they're like they're worrying about bombing hills and slapping ledges and like nyjah's worried about doing the perfect 360 body varial yeah yeah like 360 flip on this perfect ramp in this like arena it's probably like um so there's like not a lot of crowd it's like b-boy b-boy and like choreo dancers like we do the same thing, but we don't do the same thing. Yeah, it's yeah. not. It's not yeah. even the same sport in their yeah. eyes, right? So it's like you have all these different niches and different styles of skating, and they don't necessarily get along. Yeah. But like your little crew of like the Hesh style skaters, you're like they're it. all they're all like hell yeah, dude, that was sick. Yeah. 
But they watched Knives. Cool. Like, dude, that shit was whack. <laughs> It is interesting that I can't remember which which guy it was was talking about how watching Tony work on a trick, you can see the adjustments that he makes. It's just, just very small adjustments. Because you think about it, that it that's a pretty complicated thing to to push your body through space like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh yeah, that's body awareness. Yeah, it's yeah. Insane. insane. It's just crazy. Yeah, it's gymnastics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. It is it's gymnastics on fucking wheels. Yeah. Yep. Like literally, so here's the thing I want to throw in uh, to to uh, future films that we talk about. Your uh, what was your wait what moment? Like wait what? Like th- what, uh, what thing really surprised you the most? Definitely him, like basically inventing aerials. You're the ollie, yeah, the, the like ollie yeah, like I, I I knew he had skated from a young age and been a pro for a long time, but I knew '90s skateboarding. I didn't know '80s and '70s skateboarding, so all I knew was everyone's doing big air, and they started riding like bicycle ramps, and that's why I'm surprised when you tell me that kind of part of skateboarding's dead because when I watched, that was it. Like, oh, the bikers use this big ass ramp. Oh, okay, the skateboarders are gonna hop on it, and then you're like, oh fuck, you know, and they're riding down a hundred foot ramp. That's more like evil Knievel type shit. Which yeah. I, I guess that was another oh what. The one was catching air and inventing big air, mm-hmm. and then two, uh, I didn't know Tony Hawk. Uh, I thought I knew him more as like a competitor, and some of the clips they show, he was a little bit more jackassy, where he's like doing the the full pipe. He's trying to grind on a van. He's jumping the mini. Mm-hmm. I didn't know he did such. In my head, he was more clippy, of an athlete. Clippy shit. Yeah, I, in my head, he was more of an athlete um, and less of like a adrenaline junkie. But they showed yeah. a lot of his adrenaline junkie tied in with his perfection of technical skating. Mm-hmm. He yeah. also wanted to grind a fucking flamethrowing <laughs> pipe or whatever the yeah. fuck, and which I like. Of, and a lot of that shit they used in like the video game like intros and shit like that. A lot of that was like promo stuff. So th- I didn't. It, stunt even, work for promo for like to sell something even when i played the game i always thought like this oh, game's fake. cool but it's totally unrealistic but then watching this i'm like actually tony was crazy yeah. it's a little bit like obviously you can't do eight you can do 18 fucking flips in that game yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, makes yeah, it yeah. fun yeah. but uh he was crazy so like right now eric costin on like the barracks if you follow the barracks like he's doing this thing where like he's like picking like these crazy tricks from tony hawk games and he's like telling someone to like film it and in, try to do in, it in real life, and then film it, and then uh, we'll post it on the barracks. And That's people are sick. doing it. Like this one guy did like a one eighty. I can't remember what it was. It was like some kind of one eighty, like one foot, like uh, fakey, like uh, five zero, like yeah, with, like just one going foot. Crazy. Like people are literally doing Tony Hawk tricks yeah. in real life, or even him. Like he jumped a building gap. Yeah, like skyscraper, that, skyscraper. Yeah. That's more evil Knievel shit. I didn't know he did that. I shit myself watching that. Yeah, that was nuts. That was that so, was nuts. so crazy. Like I get it, but at the same time. Yeah. Like he, yeah, it probably. I mean, not not as dangerous for him as as for you know an average person, but at the for same sure. time, still dangerous. You have to think like he knows like okay, if I get to the end of this ramp, I'm still gonna my body's still gonna yeah, carry there's no over way the I missed that. But gap. what if I slip out before, before the ramp? Right. Yeah. What if there's a pebble? He doesn't even think that way though. Yeah. They, they touch on yeah. that. Yeah. He it just, mine into, doesn't even go there. Yeah, it turns into uh, the wife in Inception, <laughs> which is which yeah. is a, a, a trait I think of a lot of successful people. Uh, I've been listening to a lot of like businessy podcasts and shit lately, and like, yeah, you just you don't you, dwell on the what ifs. You just you, go for like what you want. Yeah, you just kind of got to dive into the risk and see mm-hmm. what happens. Like, yeah, and he broke his pelvis and he broke his fucking yeah. face, and like, yeah, the risks will happen, and they're probably in his head when he's not skating at home. I imagine some of the risks go through his mind, but when you're in. You're writing the check. When you're in, you're working. When you're in, you're putting on the content. When you're, you kind of just kind of go and not have that fear. Yeah. So, Dean, did you have a wait what moment? I, you know, I was pretty close to this whole story, yeah. you know, like the and stuff. But like, actually, I never knew about the rehab thing. I never knew he went uh, to like a like a, a clinic of some sort for yeah. whatever that was. Like to me, in my eyes, Tony Hawk was always this like I knew about like his kind of like you know, uh, you know, multiple wives kind of situation, mm-hmm. kind of like kind of going through some like stuff that on that I knew about that. But like as far as like him going to like a rehab, to my eyes, like Tony yeah. Hawk was like squeaky clean guy. Because he yeah. and, no and, no drugs, no no alcohol. This is like the epitome of like. An athletic skater and generally speaking, businessman. He, he still kind of is. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like even those things, that's just so human to me yeah. compared to like what other athletes are maybe or maybe not doing. <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> He's sure. Still yeah. pretty clean. Yeah, I never, I didn't know about any of that until I saw that one clip. So I guess that. But the rest of the story, I was pretty familiar yeah. with. F- for me, it was his age, and I don't know why I didn't know that. And I realized, oh, like Tony Hawk is closer to my age than he is your you yeah. guys. Yeah. By by yeah. A, a good. Bit. He was a pro in the eighties, right? Yeah, and, and we we're born in '88. Yeah, <laughs> and like, okay, so I've actually sort of known about Tony Hawk most of my life. Yeah, it's like that's maybe why 
I, I don't know. That's I don't know what, if they tapped on that enough, um, and people don't do it with LeBron James now and shit, where like longevity and being even good at a sport for three decades or yeah. four decades, like that, not only was he the fucking best and did some things no other human's done, but the longevity of being decent for a very long time, I think, is underrated in our society. Yeah. Uh, and I, th- I think for me, too, that the fact that he's still doing shit knowing how busted up his body is yeah. like my, my feeling about powerlifting a few years ago was like okay i'm gonna be sore like not and just sore but like in pain if i keep going like this yeah i'm gonna be in pain to the point that i can't sleep or i or whatever it's gonna affect the rest of my life i don't need to do that that way anymore yeah I, i'm i'm just done with it and you think about like major league baseball players basketball players football players they don't keep playing the game when they retire no, they, that's it. They it, it they they might you know they might pick. They up gained a, 70, 80 pounds and it looked like you know Shaq uh, and, uh, yeah. and Charles Barkley. Uh, uh, let's take Shaq out your mouth. Have you seen him lately? <laughs> Is he getting jacked? Again? Bro, he's got some abs. I swear, bro, it's he's all that getting, DJing, dude. He's sweating, dude. He's getting fucking after it right now. See, apparently he looks like a world's strongest man competitor. He really? looks insane. I mean, not so, uh, he's, on, so he's on TRT. Of, I don't know because. Well, he's not like all well, veiny. Of course he is. Yeah. But, well, probably, yeah. but like, you know, I don't think he's on TRT plus. Like he looks. You saw him out of, out, of, out of college. Like, he looked fucking insane. Mm-hmm. And maybe he was on some stuff then, but I, I do doubt it. Um, maybe not then, but, I, like, if he looks like that now... He's probably on some TRT, but I don't think he's on some, like, trend or some bullshit. Uh, oh, dude, TRT, you get super lean and jacked. No, he looks great. Because he's not young either. No. No, he's not. I don't yeah, know he looks he's great. Just, no, he's got to be, what, late 40s? Probably late 40s. Right? Because he probably played till he was about 40. He's been retired yeah, Maybe he's while. almost 50. Yeah. Dude, okay. he looks good, though. I wonder how old he is. The um, and also you know it's funny like they don't really mention this too. Is like I think what also helps with the longevity of like the Tony Hawks and the vert skaters too is like what you know ten year old kid had access to a vert ramp. It was so like it was such a privileged like thing that and that's also why it died. Even skate because like parks. it's it's too. That's what bull skating's still popular, but like in like you'll see a lot of clips of these pro guys that are like multi. Like, they can do the street, hard- hardcore street stuff, like the eye shots. Yeah. Like, they can do the dope street stuff, and they can go to Venice and rip. I was, you know, I like, didn't have friends that were into skateboarding, and that's kind of what stopped me getting into it, is I, all I could do is I couldn't find a skate park because I didn't know friends that were into it. And then I was young. I was third, fourth, fifth grade type shit, but um, there was, like, nowhere to go. So I'm watching the X Games and all this shit. I'm like, well, I don't have any of that, and I don't know where to find it. Yeah. The internet wasn't a thing. I couldn't Google it. My dad wasn't in escape. There was just like you gotta go to Woodward in, in Tahoe to like. Yes, yeah, I didn't even know what ramp. that was. You we know had what I, mean? no, like, I had no ramps. I, I took plywood and made like a little one foot ramp in yeah. my driveway and someone that, always broke their arm on that. Yeah, so that's <laughs> where my that's where my shit just kinda yeah. ended. I was like, There's nowhere to go here. Like all these grinds look cool. I'd like to learn how to grind. I have nothing to grind. Yeah. Get the curb out. Yeah, I didn't even have a curb. I didn't even skating. Yeah, I didn't even have a curb or yeah. sidewalk at my house. I was like, dude, I'm done. My career's over. <laughs> dude, yeah, that's it. I could have been the next Tony Hawk. You probably would have been. I yeah. would have been decent. I would more built for skateboarding than I am basketball. <laughs> <laughs> you might be thick for skateboarding though. Uh, back then, you know. Yeah, kiddo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Shaq's fifty. Yeah, fifty. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, pull him up when you guys get a chance. He looks good. I'm trying to, I, but I'm not finding anything that I'll looks all that good. What's it. his name? DJ Shaq. What's it? Is that his like? <laughs> is that his DJ name? I don't know. Is it like something? Sh- like, every picture I'm seeing Shaq here, he's pick. fat. He's fat, fat, fat. I think I think Mike has made this up. I think he had a Swear. dream. I think he had a dream that he was lifting with Shaq, and then he just got Shaq forgot. Was, no, it's I, super. Yeah, I had a dream. Fan, my wet dreams are <laughs> basketball and you're muscle d- men. You were DJing with <laughs> ripped Shaq, <laughs> we're just fucking dripping oil. I had a dream the other night that I owned a chimpanzee, but I forgot that I owned a chimpanzee. And when I found it, like it was asleep, and somebody had swaddled it like a baby, but it was dressed like fucking Curious George, but with one of those like monkey grinder hats, you know the. The, oh hell yeah! Yeah. Oh yeah, he's on TRT. The, but that's not like crazy, you know. Uh, yeah. He's not like gas to the gills. Yeah, yeah. but TRT, you know, it's, Dude, it's managed. He probably weighs three hundred pounds. He's looking pretty good. That's, he that's, looks really good, like healthy good. DJ yeah. Diesel. Yeah. I think that's his name. The big Aristotle. I think, it's, I think it's DJ Diesel. <laughs> DJ Diesel. Uh, he sells out, man. He sells out arenas. Yeah, no, of. he's amazing, dude. Shaq, Clubs. Shaq is one of the co- like pop culture guys that I don't think is like he is corny, but he's so good. Oh, dude, yeah, he's not even really corny though. No, he's, he's just, so he's good. Got, he's got, he's got it. He's he got that does. got. We're like, I, I am a hater. I hate the Rock. I hate all these people. I don't even talk to me about the Rock. Yeah, he dude. sucks. Right, that guys are absolute salesmen though. That's dude. why. That's the difference. Shaq's not trying to sell you anything. No, he's just having a good time. He's not trying to sell you anything. Every time you hear the fucking Rock speak, he's trying to sell you something. I know, and that's what's that. That's what's such a turnoff about the guy. Dude. He could be. The Shaq type guy. 
I told you about. But he was just normal. He's like, oh, everything is a, everything's a sale. The, the Here's example? a Terramana. Here, I'm trying to sell yeah. you my tequila. People don't see I'm trying it to though. Sell you my energy drink. I'm trying well, to and sell this you this show movie. on a hate rant. Is the fucking rock? I don't know if it was a TV show or Zoa or one of them. It was one project he was a part of. Yeah. He did one post promoting it. Okay, uh-huh. that's cool. That's what we build social media. And then he did ten posts saying and retweeting shit about their awards. Oh, he took all the credit when it did well. He promoted it one. I don't know if it yeah. was Zoa or a new TV show, and he said, "Wow, that's crazy. We won first. Look, we won first. Look." And he posted it all oh, day yeah. every day. I'm like, "You shut the fuck up. Like, we even... know you're famous and do well. Yeah. Who, who are you trying to prove?" I think it was that movie with Ryan Reynolds. It, it, it was. So it 100 percent was. So yeah, he did I one post that. promoting I, I didn't even it. Noticed that one post promoting it, and literally ten saying how Red Notice is the number one film on Netflix. Yeah, no shit, it is because yeah, it's got the biggest pro- stars in the world on it, and they produced it, and they choose who's one through ten. You idiot. Yeah. You I think that's organic downloads. I didn't even, I didn't even know you? that movie was out until I saw it on the number exactly. one. Exactly. Watched it, and then he part starts talking about exactly. it. Exactly. And then he's yeah, you're right. He posts about it, like maybe mentioned it once. No lead up. No like, hey, we're filming this thing. Look Netflix, at me and Ryan on the scene. Netflix produces this podcast. We're hopping up to number one too. You <laughs> dumb bitch. I know how fucking back end business works. <laughs> yeah, it's called don't ever release your analytics. Yeah, that's crazy. There's no download number underneath. Well, yeah. Yeah. Netflix is in fucking trouble right now. Yeah, so I, I heard. Don't know if you saw I that. Did not. I no, they out. lost it. 200,000, yeah. Two, they lost 200,000 subscribers in the first quarter. They're expected to lose 2 million in this quarter. Why? Other, and other their, companies their are killing it. stock is down 34%, 37%. Yeah. It is true, mm-hmm. right? Like, when was the last really good thing that went on there besides Seinfeld? Oh, Ozark. <laughs> Ozark's great. Ozark's great. I love Ozark, but that's but, about it. So that's the issue now is each streaming service has like one hitter. Here's the problem. Here's my problem. I'm falling for their bullshit now, though. I'm falling for their fucking love is blind shit. Oh, some I'm of falling for their uh, they have ultimatums. decent trash. They have decent trash. They're, they're, yeah. tra- they're I think they're converting to trash. Yeah, well, well that's w- the whole thing. Well, what, I think you're cable, right. what did cable TV do? The same thing, right? First cable TV in the '80s, '90s, you're like, damn, this is so good, high quality, and then eventually you're watching fucking Maury all day and like yeah. MTV fucking New Jersey Shore. Judge Denzel Washington. Yeah. <laughs> How many judge shows were there for a second? Where's the Judge Denzel show? <laughs> Denzel Washington would be so good. <sighs> Yeah, I don't know, but yeah, no, they got Judge Steve Harvey now, so anything's possible. <laughs> yeah, they, there's so many streaming services, and then if you even have four out of the ten popular ones, now you're paying eighty bucks. You might as well get a fucking satellite. Like yeah. it's all the same shit, and I think that's the big argument. I, I agree. There's too many of them. I cut them all. Each one person. Did you of my, really? I maybe I should. Man, each I, person of my I family. I have all of them. So you got to get family members. We, we got each, Paramount Plus. We each buy like one and all. then share. <laughs> so like my sister does Netflix. I get her password. Mom does Hulu. I get her password. I do Disney. They're, they're, I give them password. They're changing all that. Though. I know. It's not going to yeah. be a thing anymore. I know. I hate that. They're going to start charging the person whoever owns it more money. I know. I hate you're that. you're sharing your password. I hate that. Let me be free. I actually, oh, well, Netflix isn't doing it in the United States, but what's coming, because they're doing it in like Argentina and stuff. Bastards in Argentina. Yeah, yeah. What What's coming is they will they will tell you, hey, we saw there was a sign in here. Yeah, yeah whatever you're signed in and you're using this profile you can uh continue to do that but you pay us a reduced fee yeah bastards and so you it's like a family plan yeah, yeah i mean i get it essentially like a family plan but you're adding but it ain't charging them and... shit dude that that's costing them a penny to stream it to another tv fuck you yeah well, well they're just I losing know. out on like for sure much like probably 30 percent of their streaming and they're all raising prices that's what cut me and i'm not that guy but i was paying like 45 bucks for the live hulu i've probably told this story because i wanted sports how the I fuck do, do I you do, watch sports nowadays i do youtube tv so i've heard youtube I tv is good love but even that what, that's 60 bucks I'm paying like, yeah, 40, 50 bucks. Yeah, that's month. crazy. So I did Hulu, 45 bucks, and then they send me an email, and I normally ignore all the shit. They're like, we're raising it $15. I said, fuck, no, you're not. And I signed off. And I never do that. Yeah, I literally have YouTube TV for live sports. Yeah, no, I've heard YouTube TV in general is good. I've heard it's pretty decent, like a cable re- replication. Oh, no, no. It's fan. I, it's honestly, it's fantastic. It's got every channel. But now it's like, I'm literally, like you said, I'm only using it for live sports. And now, like, yeah. I'm paying 50 bucks to watch sports. Right, so you just buy NFL Pass or whatever the fuck instead. I don't know. Or switch yeah. to T-Mobile and get MLB TV for free. Yeah. Uh, see, and that's the thing. Then I can watch all the Yankee games yeah. instead of just, like, the main ones. Yeah. I can no. watch the Yes Win Network all day long and just watch the Yankees play yeah. every day. That's what my dad did. My dad literally didn't miss a single Yankee game. Yeah. He bought all, always bought the $200 add-on for Comcast for fucking oh, MLB wow. ticket. Yeah. We did that for He didn't football. give a fuck, though. He was like, you know. I remember when that stuff he first was became hard. a thing. It was life changing. Like late nineties, early two thousands, you could just buy every game ever. Dude, yeah. That was huge. That's yeah. the thing about man, 
people that kind of now it's like I know what it's like to be like a San Francisco Giants fan. You just watch every game. Yeah, but 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 before I almost think it's bad because before like you want to watch Yankees games, but before if that's not a thing, you're gonna be a Giants fan because that's the only games on your TV. Yeah, <laughs> you're like yeah, forced to, which is cool in a way. That's kind of like with me with the Oakland A's. Is like I'm actually like almost as much of an A's fan as I am a, a Yankees. Fan because you had to watch. I, it. I got to yeah. watch all the A's games. Yeah. That's and, the only uh, reason I'm a Kings fan. But I also like the Giants too. Like I don't really like give a shit about like oh this is my team. Yeah, I, I love know. watching Giants games because they're fun to watch. Yeah, who gives a and shit? And they're on TV, and I love baseball. <laughs> yeah, well there you go. Uh, to wrap this one up, let's uh, do a um, a little individual rating job on this one. I think that the rating standard should be 900 since I like 900 that. is the through line of this. Uh, you ready? So, it was. You got it? Yeah, I'm ready for mine. One, one, to, one to five many? 900. One to five. I'm gonna give it a solid four. I enjoyed it because I'm a I'm a skater. You know, I'm a skater. I liked the story. I liked, I liked it. I I enjoyed it. I like. I think I'm gonna give it a four, which is pretty high, but I I'm gonna stick to that. I I'll give it a four, four and a half. And and I I like skating, but I think like there's not a lot of holes in this. It didn't feel long. It touches on a lot of part of his life. It didn't dig in too deep to one center story per mm -hmm. se, but a lot of it. I think it's good. I think it's a good watch, regardless of what you want. There's and also a lot of really bad skateboarding. Doc that's what I'm sorry. In, oh, there's a lot of bad. Yeah, there's sure. a lot of bad skateboard like story stuff that's not like actual skate videos out there. So this was like in the league of its own well, by even, a long shot. Even just the movies and shit we've covered here, there's just a lot of bad documentaries. That's true. You know what that's I mean? True. And this was like generally speaking, like well done. Yeah. Um. And so for that reason, and because although I'm not close to skateboarding, but like the cultural presence it had in my life, mm -hmm. uh, skateboarding shit that I, I like that as well. I'm going to give it four as well. And nice. I'm gonna, for primarily for this reason, I was tired as fuck when I watched it and I didn't get bored and it was still good. Yeah. yeah it, it kept was you going. Good. It, it was it, a good it, length. All that's pretty solid. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was tired. I at the end, I was a little bit emotional for some reason. I don't totally understand. I was too. No, it's good. The dad stuff got to me too. Cause yeah. I dealt with my own kind of experience with my dad passing from cancer and like yeah. that shit fucked me up when I was watching that. And, you know, I got emotional there, and also I just got emotional. His mom with, stuff too. The, they didn't yeah. tap on it a lot, but when he's talking to his mom, that made me. Yeah, that was that was sad as fuck. Yeah. The uh, and also just like I know what it feels like in many different sports and different things. Like when you do something that you've been wanting to do so bad, that emotional hit that you get mm -hmm. of like that release. Like yeah. when I see other people experience that, it fucking makes me cry. Yeah. Like I just love that. I'm it was good. so stoked for somebody, even through a screen, yeah. to do something like that. It's just so big. Like that shit fucks me up. No. That's why I can't watch those ESPN shows. We talked about this before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those like thirty for thirties, like they, they make me cry because of like these like heroic moments of like accomplishment and like doing something that accomplishing something that you've worked so hard for and when it connects. Yeah. Like that's what gets me. Some of those thirty for thirties, they're cut maybe short to do a whole podcast on, but some of them are so good. They yeah. like really tap into the emotional side of things so well. well. We don't actually have to do a, a episode of any particular link, so we that's can do true. Whatever we want. That is true. That's true. Um, I think also, by the way, like before we get to yeah. before we sign off, we definitely all called that Will Smith winning the uh, best actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that yeah, shitty movie. Yeah, shitty movie. <laughs> yeah. Fucking hate that movie. It was so sad. This is how you know the whole thing. But if you would have predicted like, the slap, then I think you have some insight. Yeah, fucking. that's true. <laughs> and we haven't, to, we haven't seen each other in a little bit, so I we didn't get to talk about this stuff. But it's like so funny how we're like, yeah, anyway, and he's going to win the Oscar for this movie. Yeah, and, yeah, you yeah. Know, we know Hollywood plugs, man. Just Hollywood. It was just so yeah. set up and such yeah. bullshit. It was like Hollywood in a nutshell. Yeah, it, that is Hollywood. <laughs> I understand that their uh, marriage may be on the rocks now. Mm -hmm. I think it's been on the rocks. I think it, yeah, I think it has yeah. has been too. And I, I, it's something that we didn't say in that episode, the episode that we talked about it, but I wish that I had said, is that I am annoyed by the term toxic masculinity. It's toxic <laughs> personality. Yeah. It's just, it, it, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's individual. Like, yeah, yeah because the, cause the opposite of that, they say Karen or something, right? Wouldn't you say like the female version of a toxic masculinity would be a Karen in a way? Yeah. But yeah, toxic and, and, personality is just, you all suck. It's everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, Karen's more, uh, I think, you know, I think it's racist, but oh, it is kind of. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of. No one wants to talk about that. There's yeah. an entitlement part of it too. Yeah, yeah for sure. The same with my, the toxic personality or whatever. There's some kind of entitlement in there. I feel like. Yeah, I, yeah, I think so too. And I, I just think that 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 I have heard because he's got such a squeaky clean clean image. But I've heard that really there's a lot of stuff that's been going on that people have just been covering I'm sure. for. Oh, the for same, sure. That's all of them. The same golden child. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Nobody wants to think badly of yeah. of Will Smith, and yeah. so there there was all kinds of drama on Fresh Prince. From yeah. what I, uh, I've been told, yeah, I've the first right. mom and shit. I heard there was yeah, drama they, there. they like yeah, they wanted more money, and they're yeah. like, well, you're not the star, yeah, so you're, you're not gonna yeah. get more money. 
the uh yeah the the um what were we just talking about the toxic masculinity like i think that that word is so funny for yeah, some reason it is like whenever i see my friends like do something like like back like ben like for example comes to my head like i'll see him do like a big lift and he gets all fired up and i'll just literally write on his post like hey man like you need yeah, to chill with toxic. the toxic masculinity yeah. Yeah. flexing his biceps and shit <laughs> yeah meanwhile, i love trolling people with that word toenails cause are painted because it's so ridiculous and it's like and it's so funny i yeah. think that word's hilarious yeah that's part of the cancer like, what does culture. that even mean we'll get there in another day we'll talk a woke we'll do a woke podcast oh shoot yeah all right <laughs> plug away dude where can people find you uh you know at dean sidoris uh, dot ck at caffeine and kilos you're you know we're doing some coffee stuff here and there we're doing some clothes stuff here and there some podcast know, stuff enough. some podcast stuff you know gsc's kind of coming back a little bit guys in cappuccino we got to get you guys on there yeah and just shoot the shit and Absolutely. talk about good stuff yeah. we do it like you know we do it remote too we don't have to come down or, or come or down. you guys could come here that'd be fun dude. We let's do a collab yeah we could do back to backs yeah, we do a cappuccino out, hey, and then we could do a fifty percent. Also, you know, in our lounge. I know it's early, but you know, come check out our pull me at the end of the year too. Dude, the yep. turkey tug, the turkey tug. <laughs> Get your exclusive November. shirt. There's gonna be a guy with oh, a turkey by the neck on the shirt. It's gonna be sick. It's gonna look We're like just a, choking. It's gonna look like someone's hog. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's gonna look like a hot dog, but it's actually a turkey. Excellent. Yeah, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, new episodes every Wednesday and Friday. Thanks so much for listening. 3sb.co, 50% facts. Dot com. Join our Discord. Hang out there. We take questions. You win prizes. You're featured on a podcast. I'm so Mike. Everyone, want to find me? I got a piece so bad. Close them out, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> the shirt that Mike is wearing right now as he's walking away, available right now on uh, on the website on 3sb.co. I am at the Jim McD on all the social media. This show is 50% facts, where percent is a word and 50 just numbers. And head to the website, 50%facts.com. Uh, you can scroll down to the bottom. You can join our Discord. You can join the conversation. That part is free. And uh, we'll talk to you next week. Actually, no, we'll talk to you on Friday. This is a Wednesday episode. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs>